Alright, so today I want to discuss barrel twist rate. So, barrel twist rate is the rifling inside your barrel, um, and the twist rate is determined by how many full rotations that rifling makes per inches. So, for example, a 1 in 10 twist is the rifling making one complete rotation inside your barrel for every 10 inches. So, in long range precision shooting, we tend to pick heavier, longer, more higher ballistic coefficient bullets for the calibers that we're shooting. Um, for an example, uh, 243 Winchester, it is still a six millimeter bullet, but it, they typically, from the factory, um, and it's kind of changing a little bit now, but for the most part, if you buy a factory 243 Winchester, it's going to come with something like a 1 in 11 twist. A much slower twist than, say, this 6mm Creedmoor that I'm running a 1 in 8 twist, and I could even run that faster to a 1 in, 1 in 7 5 or 1 in 7 twist. Um, because typically, the 243 Winchesters, um, for the longest time, there was not a heavy six millimeter bullet selection, a not, not a high ballistic coefficient bullet selection. So for the longest time, six millimeter, 243 Winchesters were made with a much slower twist to accommodate the lighter bullets that they were shooting. Six millimeter Creedmoor, if you buy a factory six millimeter Creedmoor, typically it is going to come with at least a one and eight twist because now we have a great selection of faster six millimeter or heavier, longer, higher ballistic coefficient six millimeter bullets. So those need to be spun faster to stabilize them. So what is stabilizing a bullet? Stabilizing a bullet is the gyroscopic stabilization. So think of spinning a top. So when you were a kid and you had the top that you would get, you would spin it. And when that, when that top is spinning, it's holding itself up by the spin. So the same thing holds true for right better for bullets. Bullets as they fly through the air and are spun, they remain stable flying through the air by the spin. So we have to have the proper spin for our bullet. So what happens if you have the wrong spin for your bullet? What, if, what happens if you have the wrong twist rate for your bullet? So say you have a, a twist rate that is too slow. So that meaning that you're running a heavier, longer, higher ballistic coefficient bullet, but you're not spinning it fast enough to completely stabilize that bullet. Typically that bullet is going to leave the muzzle, unless you are really spinning it way too slow, typically that bullet's going to leave the muzzle okay, but it's not going to fly very far before it starts to become unstable. So go back to our example of the top. Think about when you spin that top right before it falls over, there's a few seconds there where it's wobbling all over the place. So the same thing happens in with your bullet stability. As it goes down range and it stops, it starts to slow down in its spin, it will start to wobble and become unstable and that will completely throw off the bullet's trajectory. So what happens if we overspin a bullet? If we overspin a bullet, say we are running a light for caliber bullet in a much faster twist than is required, there's a couple of things that can happen. First off, going back to that example of the top, if you spin a top and you, when you're a kid and you got that top and you're so happy and you've spun it as hard as you could, well when it hits the table and starts to spin, at first it has a little wobble to it before it kind of straightens out. Well the same thing can happen, or the same thing will happen if you overspin a bullet, um, a, a, too, a bullet that is too light or too short, really, for the rifling that you're shooting it out of. Um, it will start off, instead of becoming unstable, it will start off unstable. And sometimes they can straighten themselves out, but typically it's too late and it is throwing itself off its trajectory. So, another thing that can happen if you overspin a bullet, and this is probably the worst example, is if you're shooting too light of a bullet or you're spinning that bullet too fast is the bullet can completely come apart in midair. So while it's in flight, the bullet is spinning so fast or sometimes before it even leaves your barrel, spinning so fast that the bullet completely comes apart. So for an example, um, if, if you guys know anything about motors or car engines, um, say you have a car engine that that is its rev limiter is set at 6,500 RPM, and if you go past that, you know you're going to blow your motor up. So 
say you rev that motor up to 8,500 or 9,000 RPM. Well, what happens? The, the centrifugal force inside the motor is, is spinning so hard that rods start to come apart, crankshafts break. The same thing is true for your bullet. So if you spin a bullet too hard, it can either start off unstable or just completely come apart altogether. So what determines the proper twist rate for a bullet? Well, a bullet's proper twist rate is determined by something called the center of pressure. So say you spin a bullet, say you have a bullet that's gyroscopically stabilized, well that is spinning around a center point. Um, and that center point is the center of pressure. So if you have a bullet that is a high BC bullet, long for caliber, and it has a short bearing surface and a very long skinny ogive, then that bullet is gonna have a center of pressure that is further back because the weight of that bullet, most of the weight of that bullet is towards the back end of the bullet, towards the boat tail of the bullet. If you have a bullet that is still high for, high or heavy for caliber, um, still high ballistic coefficient, but it has a long bearing surface and a shorter ogive, kind of like the uh, 115 grain uh, six millimeter RDF bullets. They have a very long bearing surface and a much shorter ogive than a, typically say the uh, 110 Match King, which has a really long ogive and a short bearing surface. So the center of pressure on the six millimeter RDF bullets, the 115 RDFs, is going to be much further forward than the center of pressure on the on the 110 Match Kings. So because that center of pressure is much further forward, even though it's a heavier bullet, sometimes the heavier bullet doesn't actually require a faster twist rate. Because it's a heavier bullet, you can actually get away with a slower twist rate. Um, they both, I do believe, say on their website that they require a one and seven five, but I've stabilized both of them in a one and eight. Um, but the center of pressure with the 115 is definitely going to be further forward than the 110 Match King. So how do we know what, whatever bullet we are shooting, um, or whatever factory load we're shooting, how do we know what the twist rate that we need for that particular bullet is? Well, typically on lots of boxes of bullets, um, they will have a twist rate on the box so typically you will you will find some place on the box that says like this uh, 80 grain ELD um, says a it needs a 1 and 7 twist whereas this 90 grain match king on the box says it needs a 1 and 6 5 twist um, and if you cannot find the twist rate on the actual package if it's not on the package you can typically go to a a the company's website, whoever the whoever the manufacturer of the bullet is, and typically you'll be able to find that information. If you can't find it on the box, you can typically find that information on the manufacturer's website. Um, and if you also if if you can't find if you cannot find any information there at all if, on the manufacturer's website or on the box, um, Burger Bullets actually has on their website a bullet twist rate stability calculator. So if all else fails, you can go to Burger Bullets, enter in your bullets, weight. There's a few other factors. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but you can enter in all the, the relevant information about that bullet, and it will give you the proper twist rate that that bullet is going to require. Um, and if you if all that fails, you can typically get, typically get on some sort of forums or find information that other people, what twist rates other people are having luck with on, on the internet and go with that. And typically it's going to be all right. So just wanted to make this video to explain twist rate, explain what it was, how we determine it, and uh, answer some questions in case people had or were wondering about how twist rate work, it works because it's a very in-depth subject. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.